She's China's number one online content creator. Her name is Li Ziqi. She has become popular in many countries worldwide for her videos on the simple, idyllic farming life of rural China. She seems to be in trouble recently, as her channel stopped updating three months ago. On October 25th, her company confirmed to have officially filed a lawsuit against its partner in a court in Sichuan Province. At the same time, several of China's top-ranking official media outlets launched her interviews rather frequently. On October 22nd, China National Television aired an interview with her, and on September 21st and 28th, China National News Agency and Xinhua News Agency also released two of her interviews. In this episode, we will explore what kind of capital schemes, traps, and government intentions are behind this Chinese-style Wonder Woman. 我觉得我很幸运，而且我也很感激我从出生到现在遇到的这一切事情。我跟我爷爷奶奶生活了，后来我又遇到了我们的妇联，解决我的读书啊那些问题。也有很多那种好心的记者会去帮我，他们去帮我报道，就会有好心人联系我。所以我，我我一直觉得我是一个蛮幸运的人。It's impossible to tell whether her remarks were sincere because she was in front of a national TV audience. What she said, though, is satisfying on all fronts. Not different from Chinese champions at the Olympics, who humbly attribute their success to the support and nurturing of the Chinese government. In February, Li set a Guinness World Record for most subscribed Chinese YouTube channel with 14.1 million followers. According to non-influencers, YouTube channel value estimation analysis, Li's channel earns more than 500,000 U.S. dollars per month and up to 2 million U.S. dollars a month. She has over 100 million followers on multiple platforms in China, but this portion of revenue isn't yet available. However, it seems the revenue from these videos is far less than the merchandise sales. According to DaoSJ.com data, Li's official flagship store sales exceeded 190 million RMB or 30 million U.S. dollars in the first quarter of 2020, with sales volume and revenue increasing by 37 times and 23 times respectively in the same period. Another set of data from Dolphin Intelligence's 2021 Most Growing Chinese New Consumer Brands shows that Li Ziqi's sales in 2020 were 1.6 billion RMB, or 250 million U.S. dollars, a 300 percent increase year on year. But the massive revenue from merchandise sales is likely having nothing to do with Li Ziqi herself. That's why she is taking her partner company to court. In November 2016, a video by Li received over 60 million views on Chinese websites. It caught the attention of the founder of Wei Nian Brand Management Company. He visited Li and wanted to partner up. In July 2017, Wei Nian and Li Ziqi established Shishuan Ziqi Culture Communication Company with 51% and 49% shareholding, respectively. Which means that Li isn't the company's controlling shareholder. With a team and capital behind her, Li has leapt to become the top content creator for Chinese-style videos. Li has also opened a YouTube channel overseas through Wei Nian, which is a multi-channel network company. In July 2021, Wei Nian was valued at nearly 800 million U.S. dollars after ByteDance took a stake in the company. ByteDance is a multinational internet technology company based in Beijing, with products such as today's headlines, Douyin, and its overseas version, TikTok. Li Ziqi isn't in a good place as all of her branded products are under the name of Wei Nian, which she has no ownership of. That is to say, regardless of the shareholding structure or business structure, Li is in a passive position. Some industry insiders say that under such circumstances, Li has very little chance of winning a lawsuit, as the Li Ziqi brand is the core of the business. Whether she can retain control of her trademark and the right to use it is critical in the lawsuit. Previously, on August 30th, Li posted on Chinese social media platform Weibo that she called the police early in the morning. Later, in a response to an online message, she wrote, "Capital is good at scheming." Against this backdrop, her recent appearances in the highest-ranking CCP media outlets are significant. There are three things that I most want to do. The first is to help promote rural revitalization and common prosperity. That is, I want to run a replicable, spreadable, recyclable, and promotable pilot program in an area that can really help ordinary people increase their incomes. Second, I want to better inherit and spread our intangible cultural heritage. Her wish is probably difficult to fulfill in reality. 
Her success has to do with her brilliance, hard work, and luck. But this kind of success isn't easy to replicate. Most Chinese people, especially those in rural areas, are struggling along the path of a first half of life. Li Zhiqi's real name is Li Jiajia. She was born in 1990. Her parents divorced when she was young. Her father died early, and her grandparents raised her. Unable to afford school, she dropped out at age 14, leaving home to work out of town for more than a decade. She worked at a restaurant as a waitress and a DJ in a bar. In 2012, when her grandmother was seriously ill, she decided to return to her hometown in the rural areas to take care of her grandmother. In the interview, Li also mentioned that she earned less than 47 U.S. dollars a month when she worked as a waitress in the city. With China's strict household registration system, the rural population is second-class citizens compared to the urban population. They are at the bottom of the social ladder with the least amount of social resources and protection. Because of poverty, more and more young people are trying to get out of the rural area and work in the city, creating a unique phenomena in China's city landscape: migrant workers. According to official Chinese statistics, in 2011, China's urban resident population reached 691 million people, exceeding 50% of the total population for the first time. Some experts are concerned that the exodus of young and middle-aged laborers from the rural areas will lead to a rural deterioration and a decline in agricultural production. Many dwellings in the countryside are vacant and collapsing. There are fewer productive members in the villages. It's mainly the elderly, children, and women left behind, worsening the rural demographic structure. One of the Chinese government's reform and opening policies is to develop urbanization and industrialization vigorously. This policy has been carried out simplistically by Chinese rural governments, large and small, as building buildings and setting up chemical plants. As a direct consequence, it has caused irreparable damage to the environment and ecology in rural areas. The official National Soil Pollution Survey communique, released in April 2014, shows that China's soil exceeds the standard by 16.1 percent. Among them, 19.4 percent of the arable land exceeded the standard for pollutants, and the rate of exceedance for soil cadmium reached 7 percent. None of these realistic issues are seen in Li's videos. Here is the ground in the villages of Heilongjiang Province. It's all yellow earth. When it rains, it's full of mud. To make the road look nice, the government uses weed killer every day. See, there is no grass on the street. The green vegetables are being contaminated. It's virtually poisoning. Can you see? No grass grows by the street. A large quantity of herbicide is used regularly. They drive to spray it. You can't see the corn. It's obvious. The corn next to the street basically doesn't grow. They are dying because they have been contaminated by herbicides. Buy herbicides. Use herbicides. The land can't be restored to its original condition. Who bought them and where were they used? Are there consequences? No one is looking into it. No one cares. These videos have created a fantasy world. It's, it's so simple,、um, but it really touches you deeply. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing really、uh, fancy or complicated about it. It just reminds us that actually we don't necessarily need to make our lives so complicated. With with her videos, when you see her going out and and doing these things, and you you hear the sound of, of the knife cutting or the or or her stamping. On, on vegetables or preparing food, you know, all of these sounds—they're familiar to us. They are the music of, of nature. It's a, perhaps a new trend in, in social media that we want to appreciate a different pace of life. Her skin is completely different. She has her own skin, and then her mother and her 
邻居一起喝茶吗？那个画面我觉得非常非常美。他视频里面描述的事情是生活的本质，呃，他的视频里当中描述的事情还是我我们莫名其妙感觉怀念的，可能我们的身体里面。When I receive so many special messages and comments, I'm so touched. I really think maybe they just like China, our traditional culture, our food, and the feeling between my grandma and me. They may also be fond of the great rivers and mountains in our country. Every time I make a New Year video, friends from all over the world leave their comments. They wish China a happy New Year in different languages. It seems that we live in a global village, and everyone is happy, and they are all sending their blessings. This is really touching. We can see from the video that Li, who comes from a rural background and experienced many hardships at a young age, shows incredible endurance, a learning spirit, a love for life, and a desire for rural beauty. Many people are looking for the lifestyle of being away from the hustle and bustle and close to nature and being self-sufficient. In addition, there may be a sense of longing for an ancient culture that people have felt in their heart. Li Ziqi's 各种文章是铺天盖地的多了起来。Ever, um, her name is Li Ziqi. Have you ever heard of the Li Ziqi? 在带有诗意的田园背景当中，制作着各种全世界多地的粉丝。In the first few years of making videos, Li was simply an independent folk presence. Starting in 2019, the Chinese government realized her unique value. On YouTube, the CCP's top broadcaster CGTN has less than three million followers. The Confucius Institute, on which the Chinese government has spent hundreds of millions of dollars, is being boycotted by a growing number of international populaces. The party media's propaganda story of newlyweds copying party charters on their wedding day has become a laughingstock that the Chinese make fun of in private. The Communist Party's propaganda has always aimed to get the Chinese public to confuse the party with China and Chinese culture. The party has discovered an opportunity in the videos Li creates. On December 9, 2019, the Chinese Communist Youth League tweeted on Chinese social media platform Weibo with the headline, "Because of Li Zhiqi, millions of foreigners fell in love with China." Subsequently, China's national broadcaster CCTV also published a commentary saying. In Li Zhiqi's video, there isn't a single word praising China, but she has done an excellent job of communicating Chinese culture and telling Chinese stories. Over the years, Li Zhiqi has also been given a string of political titles, such as a member of the 13th All China Youth Federation, Ambassador for the Promotion of China's Rural Youth, Prosperity Leaders, Ambassador for the Promotion of Chengdu's Intangible Cultural Heritage, and a Good Netizen of Chinese Youth. Intangible cultural heritages are disappearing every day. I used to learn wooden movable type printing in Dongguan Village. Only two people could really master that skill. Others were either too old to do the job or too young to stay calm and focus on learning. I was really shocked at that time. I thought intangible cultural heritages need to be seen and put under the spotlight. This is why I spent so much energy focusing on intangible cultural heritages. So, I went to the festival after that time. I was very shocked. At that time, I used to say, "Some viewers questioned the disconnection between the video and real life." The People's Daily wrote, "It doesn't matter whether what Li Zhiqi shows in her video is real life or elaborate rendition. What matters is the beauty of the Chinese lifestyle she portrays, which attracts people to engage with it." It looks like these media also know clearly that Li Zhiqi reflects an ideal rural life, not the livelihood of farmers. Her work is mainly in line with the values and tastes of some of China's higher income class. Being from a rural background, Li is very capable and does her farm work very well. But there is a fundamental difference between Chinese farmers who make their living by farming and those who make their living by showing farming. Now let's look back at Li's lawsuit. Her operating agency has investors that include an internet giant, ByteDance. On the one hand, these companies hope to turn their investments into a new consumer business, and on the other hand, they have said that they would like to work with the CCP to tell the China story. In this regard, the capitalists and the government have the same goal. It should be no surprise that CCTV and Xinhua News Agency have recently launched interviews with Li Zhiqi very intensively because of these influential capitalists. 
It can be speculated that Li Zhiqi may have gotten better leverage in the negotiation process, gaining more say than before in terms of equity and brand. So, she is also willing to cooperate. It seems that the capitalist and Li Zhiqi haven't yet reached a compromise, and the interests of all parties are still being played out. The latest word is that in the face of the dispute between Li Zhiqi and her partner company Wei Nian, Wei Nian shareholder ByteDance has started the withdrawal process on October 16th. The CCP is currently reining in the online data using the slogan of common wealth to redistribute wealth and strictly policing speech. Given such a storm, do China's online celebrities have enough scheming in them to maneuver in the complicated vortex of government and business? Should they stay close or away from the Red Party to be safe? These are questions that merit quiet reflection.